The 2023 season is behind us. That means we need to go cut a bunch of dead weight from our rosters and hopefully add in some interesting stashes that might find value in 2024. Let's start with our highest value player on this list. It's going to be Chase Brown with the Cincinnati Bengals. Chase Brown has become the clear-cut handcuff over the last couple of weeks with the Bengals, and we all know what he's capable of doing, or we've seen what he's capable of doing. He is explosive, he's a good playmaker, and he's consistent. That is what Chase Brown has shown us, and he's only averaging like eight touches a game like over the last five weeks here. So it's not a huge sample size, but in a limited, limited role, he has looked phenomenal. And when you look at what could happen next season or even take place in the next two to three months, Joe Mixon is a cap casualty potentially, just like he was last year. And he may take another pay cut and he may stick around and that could really jack up the whole Chase Brown thing. But assuming Joe Mixon gets cut, Chase Brown is another player who, maybe not on talent, but on the pure volume, could be a high-end RB2, RB1 situation. I think realistically, RB1 is going to be lofty because they're going to bring in another guy to, to work with Chase Brown. I don't think they go full workhorse running back immediately after moving on from Mixon, but Chase Brown as a 1A is a damn good option, and we've seen it this season. Basically, if you have volume, if you can touch the ball 15 to 18 times a game, you have a chance to finish as an RB1 every single week. So Chase Brown is a guy to keep an eye on. Yeah, probably not available on waivers, but if I can get him for a third, maybe add him in as a throw-in into another trade, I think that's like the sweet spot for somebody like Chase Brown to add to the end of your bench and just hope things break the right way. Keeping with the theme of trying to find potential future handcuffs, that's really what this is about. Uh, we're going to go to Kevin Harris with the New England Patriots. The path to him being behind Ramondre Stevenson as the two is open because Zeke's a free agent after this year. And yes, they could bring Zeke back. But with Belichick likely getting fired, I don't think Zeke comes back to this roster. I don't think Belichick pushes for that because he's not there to make the push. So Kevin Harris, who becomes an exclusive rights free agent, likely is back with the team and has to survive the draft and free agency. But if he does all of that, he's the RB2. Is he a home run hitter? No. Is he a superstar? Absolutely not. Is he a handcuff that I think if you gave him 20 touches, could give you 12 to 15 points? Absolutely. This is also going to be a team that adds a new quarterback next year. Like Bailey Zappi? No. Mac Jones? Absolutely not. Now you get Drake May or Caleb Williams. That's a better offense immediately. You assume they'll be in on guys in free agency in terms of the wide receivers, maybe even in the draft as well. Belichick's not picking them, so they might actually turn into good wide receivers. You're just adding him off of waivers. It is a no-cost, no-risk flyer that I think is worth taking. The RB3 on our stash list is actually available in 91% of leagues right now. And it's not really shocking that he's available in 91% of leagues because he started the year as the RB4 on this roster. Actually, he didn't even start on the Colts. Tyler Goodson was not on the Colts to start the year. He was a Green Bay Packer on the practice squad. He's now been signed to the Colts active roster that has to do with Zach Moss being injured and not being able to play. However, I think Tyler Goodson is going to stick around because after this year, Zach Moss is a free agent. There's no guarantee he's back. Trey Sermon is a restricted free agent. Basically, depending what they do, at the running back position, Tyler Goodson could be the RB2 behind Jonathan Taylor next year. And small sample alert here, he said 13 carries. I know it's not a lot. He averaged over six and a half yards a carry. And yeah, like that's a nonsense fluky thing we're not going to put a ton of stock into. But that's who he was at Iowa. Like he is fast. He is explosive. He's going to bounce runs to the outside. But you put him in this offense and you get Anthony Richardson back. It's going to be a damn good running offense. And if Jonathan Taylor gets hurt again, Tyler Goodson is a top handcuff. Assuming, right, he survives all the madness that's going to take place over the next couple of weeks. But right now, think about it. There is no cost to acquire him. You're not trading for him. You're not really doing anything other than adding him to the very, very end of your bench. And our final running back, very similar to Goodson, very similar to Kevin Harris. It is now Eric Gray. He has a path as of right now to be the RB1 in New York next year. Do I think it happens? No. Do I think realistically he ends up as the handcuff to whoever they sign in free agency or draft? Absolutely. Because Saquon Barkley's a free agent. Matt Breida is a free agent. Eric Gray is last man standing. 
That's it. It is just him. So you're looking at a guy that has a path to be a potential starter next year. Has to survive and have a ton of luck. Even in that offense, you get Daniel Jones back. You have a bad wide receiver group. You have Darren Waller, maybe. You have Daniel Jones. It's it's ugly. It's bad. It's gross. It's disgusting. But volume. Volume, volume, and volume. If you can add Eric Gray as a back-end deal in a trade, add him off of waivers, that is worth the time. Because, again, we're just looking for guys that have value or could find value next year. All right, guys, that is all we have for you. Again, thank you for watching. If you like what we're doing, uh, drop a comment, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. As always, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.